Saxons are gone, Scarab conversion on rare monsters is gone. You want to choose your maps, but how? With the coming changes of a reworked atlas, new passives, and giving us access to up to three atlas trees, I believe almost every end gamer would want to have a Scarab tree. Unless you're a mirror printer like Fabgun, Belton, Captain Lance, or Kobe Black Mamba. Why is it important that you have a Scarab tree? Because the rich guys will buy up all the good scarabs and drive up the price and you can't get into the farm unless you farm them yourself or you compete with them on price or you can have a cut of their profits by selling the scarabs that they need to them. There's a possibility where scarab farming could become a tier 1 map spam strategy like essence and beast farming where before but generally higher tiered maps have higher item quantity and rarity from the explicit mods on the map and they scale way better in higher tier maps. Some scarabs are probably also rarer and maybe are gated behind red tiers for example that they only start dropping after tier 11 maps or tier 14. I could imagine that being the case for the scarabs that were priorly known as winged scarabs. For the passive tree. Before you block or favor some of the scarabs, you should definitely check out PUE Ninja for the prices and do that throughout the league so you don't accidentally block the most valuable ones because it's a shifting market and you want to stay up to date. There are 24 different scarab types and you could block 9 of those close at the start where you can for example block harvest or delirium and you can favor up to 9 different scarab types with the nodes named carapaces close to the top of the tree. Before we jump into the trees, some other interesting parts in the patch notes. All scarabs are now world drops and no longer have tiers. Sextants offered for purchase by Kirok have been replaced with scarabs. This could be that we can buy veiled scarabs from Kirok, but I assume it has like double or triple the price of the actual market value of the scarabs. And they are probably weighted that you gain the base version more easily than the horned versions which are the most valuable ones, I assume. In addition to reworking the currently available scarabs, we've also introduced 20 new scarabs. And on the Reddit post, I counted 97 different scarab types in total, added a set of modifiers that cause strong boxes to contain additional scarabs of particular types. These modifiers can be found in strong boxes, ornate strong boxes and large strong boxes. Strong boxes is likely one of the big influxes of scarabs. Also added a new vendor recipe that can be used to trade three scarabs for a single scarab of type different from those vendored. And the screenshot shows 24 different types, so you don't need a horizon op anymore. You also get one of the 23 remaining different scarab types on reroll. Why explorative carapaces might become one of the most valuable nodes? Small atlas passives that previously provided 0.5 chance for map drops to be duplicated now instead provide 3% increased scarabs found in your maps. Which means map duplication on the tree is now gone. With wandering paths which double the effect of small nodes gone, the maximum chance to drop a connected map now is only 66% and we don't get a guarantee map return anymore. And Uber Pinnacle boss fragments can only drop in T17 maps. In my opinion, all three of these changes make the cartography scarab, which affects the map top chance, really valuable. As well as a small spoiler for the next video, I look at the scarabs that just released and Delirium looks really good. You also basically never want to block Delirium. Some methods of getting more scarabs is farming unique monsters and rare monsters. They inherently get higher increased item rarity and item quantity bonuses as well as the nodes significant droves. For unique monsters in your maps have 200% increased chance to drop scarabs and amplified artifacts. For rare monsters in your maps have 50% increased chance to drop scarabs per monster modifier affecting them. If any unique monster counts for the bonus, then rogue exiles from strong boxes possibly too and maps with multiple bosses are the best source for it but if only the last boss counts then the keystone thorough investigation and unrelenting torment might be a great way to boost the loot as well as the scarab horn scarab of pandemonium monster packs in area have 50 percent chance to be replaced by a random atlas boss as well as domination scarab of terrors Shrines and area are guarded by additional map boss and for rare monsters the question is about the monster modifiers if 50% are for each mod, like hasted, at a cold, crit, etc. on a monster, and maybe even the mods like ghosted or delirium influenced, eater or Stephen Exoc influenced, or maybe even map mods like 20% faster, 
attack cast and movement speed, 100% physical as extra lightning, etc. Then nodes like Science and Eternal Torment become really valuable, but in general modifiers that affect the amount of rares and the map item quantity and rarity should be really valuable for this strategy, like Abyss, Harbinger, Breach, Legion, Harvest, Beyond, Alva, and maybe Ritual and Blight. For the Atlas tree, we start the other way around than what you expect. First, you start with the endgame tree and most of the stuff that I thought we might want to take. And then we keep reducing it depending on some factors. And at the end, we land at the base tree. You can skip to the end, but I definitely would recommend you to watch the full breakdown so you can understand how to optimize it yourself better depending on the scenarios of what works and what doesn't. Then you don't need to wait for somebody else to make a video and upload it before you can edit the tree yourself and make more profit. Then for the passive trees, first you have a version with 177 passives. This tree has almost all of the nodes that could apply to finding more scarabs. Firstly, the necropolis stuff. I took the modifiers that increase your rarity and the amount of rares you have, especially the node Eternal Torment. Haunted pack leaders in your maps have 50% increased chance to be rare, which should work together with amplified artifacts. Rare monsters in your maps have 50% increased chance to drop scarabs per monster modifier affecting them, but they are some of the least impactful in my opinion. That's why we cut them first, and then we gain to this tree without the necropolis stuff. Harbinger gives us a lot of rare mobs, but it takes up a lot of points from here, here, and here. So these are the ones we skip next. Then for the rogue exiles, with 8% chance to contain 20 additional rogue exiles and they are unique monsters. And with exile will, they get possessed as well, together with unrelenting torment for increased quantity and thorough exploration for affecting your map bosses with wildwood wisps to get even higher quantity and rarity bonuses. That rarity probably doesn't affect it anymore with the scarab conversion modifiers gone. So in the next tree, we cut out the Harbinger and Rogue Exiles, as well as Sion's. But if Sion's, the five rare monsters to be possessed, counts towards the amplified artifacts, besides the inherited item quantity and rarity from the ghost, then we might want to keep Sion's as well. In this version, we cut out the Harbinger, here, 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 and the Rogue Exiles, Sion's, and Unrelenting Torment for the 30% quantity, and the map bosses don't get the ghosts anymore, as well as the thorough exploration is gone, which would make the maps really, really difficult, I think, unless you run in like in T1s. And here we only have two blocks and on this side three. Therefore, I thought another version is we reduce the amount of blocks we have. Then we skip the right side here, save a bunch of points and path through the left side. Then I thought about if we skip out on the additional rarity and quantity in the middle here, then we can save a bunch of Harbinger nodes as well. Then we would gain this version. Or if you rather skip out on 20% pack size for the Eater of World or the Searing Exarch and keep the quantity and rarity in the middle, then we have this version instead. We cut out this and add this instead. Then here we have a lot of map modifier effect. And if you skip out on this and invasive adversaries, chisel perfection, and mounting modifiers, then we gain this tree with a lot less map modifiers, basically this, which gives around 100 increased effect of modifiers, and we gain it down to like 16% instead. Then if you go to lower maps, then you don't need to alter anymore, and you instead can take back the basics. Then your maps randomly have between 0 to 80% more modifier effect, extra content cannot appear in your maps, and cannot apply influence to your maps. And the Eater of World and Searing Exarch and Maven, probably, Shaper and Elder, these are influences, and you can't gain access to them anymore, and you need very less passive points this way, and this is likely the tree when you want to rush low level maps, like T1 spamming for Scarab farming, but I could imagine that some of the higher tier Scarabs are gated behind T11 or T14 plus maps, but if you start out and gain about 100 points, then this is the tree for you. Then if you want to skip out on some of the quantity and rarity, we gain this tree. Just misses a bit of the middle. Also forgot to mention, if you cut out the uh, map modifiers, it's more efficient to path through Nico in here and drop all the instead. And this is the very base version of your tree without any of the carapaces nodes, which increases your chances for nine of the different mods, which doubles the chance of one of your scarabs to be one of the specific types of the node. 
for Domination, Harbinger, Ambush, Anarchy, Cartography, Reliquary, Torment, Beyond, or Essence, as well as nine of the passives down here, which restricts the scarabs that can drop. For example, here you cut out all of the ritual scarabs that could drop, or the Blight, or Tomatum, or Delirium, but I would not cut out Delirium, because Delirium has some of the craziest scarabs we can get in 324. You could cut out Breach, Abyss, Expedition, Sacred Grove, or Legion. And that way you can favor nine of the scarabs and block nine of the scarabs. And with this tree, the math is here, we gain 70 times 4% increased scarabs found in your maps. For the 3% version, we gain 33 nodes. We gain 20% increased scarabs found in your maps. And then for unique monsters in your maps have 200% increased chance to drop scarabs. And rare monsters in your maps have 50% increased chance to drop scarabs per monster modifier affecting them. Depending on what counts for this, the rare is probably the craziest version. The base version is 179% increased drop chance for scarabs without the unique or rare conversion, which means you gain all almost three times as many scarabs as anybody else that does not run this tree.